So, so my, 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 first, my first point is Muslims are working to a double standard because they have cognitive dissonance. They're not, they haven't fully thought out their own doctrines. So for example, and I don't know what religion you, you are, bro, but in, in, in terms of Islamic doctrine, Muslims believe that Allah has a veil, a veil that he created that limits his own glory from destroying the universe. That's in Al-Tirmidhi, the, the hadiths of Al-Tirmidhi. Now that demonstrates that Muslims have in their religion a concept that created things can limit divine attributes. Furthermore, furthermore, Muslims believe that the Quran is the eternal word of Allah. And yet here it is, well it's not actually in there today, funnily enough, but usually I carry a Quran in a book form inside my bag. So a book that is supposedly the eternal word of Allah is encapsulated and carried by a man inside of a bag and has entered into creation, carried by a created thing, the angel Gabriel, according to Islamic doctrine. Now, if the Muslim argument was consistent, they would have to admit that this entails imperfectibilities upon Allah and his attributes. But they reject that and that's where the cognitive dissonance comes in. Because when they address the incarnation, they use these arguments like, well, these are imperfections not worthy of Allah. But when you point out exactly the same principles in their own religion, they turn around and say, no, these are not imperfections of Allah. That's cognitive dissonance. It's a double standard. And that is how I would answer that. Because if it, if it can be truly held to be true by Muslims, in the examples in their faith, they have no basis of criticism to attack Christians in our faith when we're using exactly the same beliefs and principles. Saying, well, Islam is wrong, so we might, must be default wrong also. But if they're correct, then you can't be correct. Can I reply? So, I don't really explain my point properly. For, for, you said there's limitations in a, a book coming here. I wouldn't, we, we don't necessarily say that's God. We just say the Creator Himself, there's things that He can and cannot do. That's not limiting His glory, if anything, that's adding to His glory. So having limitations, um, being able to not have um, ultimate knowledge, being having the ability to die, um, we don't associate these with uh, godly char characteristics. So if anything, we're sort of raising the value of God as opposed to saying He can do everything. One of them is being lie, cheat, you know, fail to exist, uh, be dependent. These things we would say sort of take away from his, uh, his godship. So how would you sort of... Yeah, I'd reply to that by pointing out that you haven't actually addressed the argument that I just made. You ignored it. All you've done is restate the, the obvious position, which is the Islamic one, the Islamic argument, but you haven't actually addressed with the, 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 my initial counter. Uh, let me, no, 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 let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Sure, sure. The, the, the reality is, if you believe that the veil of Allah limits the glory of Allah, which you do, it literally says that in your text in al tirmidhi in the Hadith, then that means that you have accepted that Allah's attributes can be limited by something that is created. And the Quran demonstrates that there can be something like incarnational, that the attribute of Allah's divine eternal word can coexist in in place and time in creation on in can paper and this is what christians teach when we say that the divine son the divine logos took to himself a human nature now does ink and paper have limitations yes does that limit the divine attribute of allah's eternal word that coexists in time and place on ink and paper. Well, that's the point, isn't it? Because Muslims would say no. They would say that all those people in Saudi Arabia who are flushing Qurans down the toilet in their thousands, as something you can look up, it is happening. Those people are not damaging the word of Allah because the word of Allah is above it and they're just damaging ink and paper. We Christians are saying that when Christ dies, when Christ is born, when Christ eats, he does so because of a human nature. And yes, that involves limitations on divine attributes like access to, not possession of divine knowledge. 
Because if Allah's glory can be limited by the shank, the, div the, the created veil of Allah, then we also believe that divine access to divine knowledge can be limited by human nature. But the Logos, the divine word, always possesses the divine knowledge, but doesn't always access it because of the limitations of human nature. Do you want to reply to that? We don't, we don't say God is the Quran. So when it appears on paper form, people are flushing it down. Yeah. That's, that's just a materialistic thing at that point. Thank you. That's what I said it was. So it's a materialistic thing. Thank you. Right? But we don't say God is a materialistic thing. Christians do. But you're no, saying no. It because, of course you're saying it's a materialistic thing because Jesus is, is, is in the flesh, isn't he? He's, he's, he's in the physical. Jesus is not in the physical. Can I reply? Sure. So Christians, long before Muslims ever came up with the distinction, that when these people in Saudi Arabia flush the, toilet, the Quran down the toilet, that they're just damaging paper and ink. Long before that, centuries before that, at the Council of Ephesus, we were very clear that Christ suffered according to the flesh, that Christ died according to the flesh, that the divinity does not die. In, when we talk about the incarnation, we expressly state in our articulation of doctrine that the, the divine does not become human, it doesn't change. Divinity does not change into humanity. So it is exactly the opposite of everything the Dawagandists have ever told you. They're attacking a straw man because they've never bothered to be honest in debate, discussion or study. And they've never actually engaged with what Christians believe. Now hold on, wait, 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 I am finished. It is a straw man because I want you to take this on board when you come in next, that we say that the divinity does not change into a humanity. Take that on board when you reply. Now, that is identical to the defense that Muslims give about the Quran and paper and ink. Now, you're right. Obviously, Muslims don't say that the Quran is God. I, that's totally right, obviously. And that is different from what Christians say when we say Jesus is God. And we'll come on to that when I speak next. But what I want to point out to you is, and I want you to answer this question. Is the, can it be in any conceivable universe that the eternal word of Allah can exist distinct from and independent to Allah himself's existence? You made this argument before. Yeah. Um, I'm not the first person to address that question. I don't have enough knowledge in terms of the divinity of, of, of Allah and um, his relationship with the Quran in terms of time. Um, you haven't answered my question in regards to the attributes of God and him being able to limit himself. There's things, there's things that I mentioned, and Islam's not going to help you. I don't know how this is turned into an Islamic debate when we're talking about God and the, uh, Allah and the Quran now. My, my question initially was to you, um, can God do everything? This was almost at the base of my argument. It was almost, can God do everything? Can God limit himself? Can God fail to exist? Can God do things out of his nature that go outside of his, uh, of his Godship? Yeah? And you're basically saying, yes, he can. And well, you are saying that. So, so when, when Jesus is brought to this earth, he's limited on sort of worldly, worldly elements. He, he, he needs sleep, he needs water, he depends on gravity, you know, stuff like this, right? We, we don't believe that giving God these characteristics is benefiting him. We think it sort of uh, decreases his value, decreases his Godship. So I don't see how, in a Christian perspective, God, uh, Jesus being God, or I don't know what your position is on that, the Son of God or God, we don't believe that's, that's, that's possible. That goes outside of God's um, ability. So that's, 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 that was my initial question. Can I reply? That, so that's my, let me sort of summarize. My question for you was, how can God limit himself? How can he become um, lacking in knowledge? How can he do these things? If it's not in his nature, if you're saying he's the all-knowing, 
He's the self-sufficient, independent. I believe you also hold those those views also. How can how can he die? How can he create something? Can I, can I reply? Okay, so I, I without, without right. using the no 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 hold on. Can I reply? Ideology. Can I reply? So firstly, you don't get to set the terms of the debate. I will answer the question however I feel is necessary. I'm going to address your question head on, and then I want to make some auxiliary points with regards to Islam. So please don't interrupt when I address the question head on from the Christian perspective, because I have other comments about Islam that I want to make. Okay? Now, to address your question head on, there are obviously illogical things that God does not do. Okay? However, when we say, and I'm going to address the question of Christ and knowledge, we make a distinction between Christ possessing the divine knowledge and Christ having access to the divine knowledge. Let me use a human analogy you're very familiar with to demonstrate what I mean by that distinction. I'm sure you've had examples in your own life where you've gone home, you've put your cash card or your car keys down or your keys down, and then you need them again and you can't remember where they are, and you look high and low and you can't find them, and you're sitting there going, flip, how am I going to get to the shops? And then boom, it comes to you, oh, I stuck them in such and such a place. You remember and you go and get them straight away, you remember. That's an example of possession of knowledge without access to knowledge. That's an example of it. It shows the distinction is a real distinction. And we Christians believe that at the Incarnation, Christ maintains the possession of all divine knowledge in his human existence. But he becomes like us in every way. And to be like us in every way is to have limited access to divine knowledge because all knowledge is divine knowledge anyway. Everything you know, God knows. So all your knowledge is God's knowledge. You just gain access to things that God knows. Now, so Christ gains, uh, doesn't have access because that wouldn't be human. And we believe Christ became fully human without changing from his divinity. Now, that I've addressed that point directly, I want to point out something, that you have exactly the same principle in your religion, and you haven't addressed it. The veil of Allah limits the glory of Allah, because if the veil wasn't there, the glory of Allah would destroy everything as far as Allah's eyes could see. Now, what can't Allah see? So that's saying the glory of Allah would destroy everything, which means that he creates something that limits his glory. So in other words, a divine attribute can be limited by a created thing. The principle is the same. It's just we're applying it to more things than the destructive glory of God. Now, um, additionally, you're saying that, I, I want to point out to you that Islamic concepts like self-sufficiency that you, put, you appeal to is self-contradictory in Islam. Because the idea that Allah is, I think it's Al-Ghani in Arabic, that he's all-sufficient, means that he is sufficient in everything, all the time, in every way. Agreed? Now, if he's self-sufficient in every way, all the time, in every conceivable way, that means that this contradicts the idea of Allah being all merciful because mercy cannot exist without two parties, a party giving the mercy and a party receiving the mercy. And thus that contradicts the concept of al Ghani, and you've got a contradiction within Islamic theology. Here's another contradiction. Allah is the owner of all things, but in the Quran it says Allah is the inheritor of all things. Well, how can you inherit what you already own? So if you want to talk about contradictions, you've got all those problems in Islamic theology and our theology is defended by using a principle that you adopted from us to defend inconsistency, what would be inconsistencies in your theology about the veil and about the Allah, uh, about the Quran just being a book. I feel I did, but go on. Okay. 
we, we started to talk about the names of Allah. We talk, we're talking about the contradictions in theology, Islamic like theology. Um, you not, you, again, you didn't, you're not answering it. You keep comparing the Quran and flushing toilets and all this sort of stuff. How, how can how can God remove His God Godship? So is that so God can do anything according to you? Can I reply? Um, if you can answer that question, I, I want to have a, a discussion because it's you talking for ten minutes, me me saying something, and then you keep responding, and it's not much of a conversation. Well, I'm, I'm letting you talk, bro. So, so in terms of can, can God do anything? I don't want it to be like five minutes, five minutes. I just want to I just want to ask you questions as well. Right. So I, I've said that 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 God you, does. You're, you're speaking so much, and then you're expecting me to. Well, you finish your points. The argument, and then. You finish your points and then I'll reply. I'm simply asking you, can God do everything? Right, so I'll reply to that question. Right, so as I say, that which is rationally contradictory, obviously God does not do. You know, it's the classic, can, let, no, wait, well, let, let's not interrupt one another. You ask me a question, I'm now answering it. If you ask a question, it's on you to hear the answer. So, and then I'll ask you a question. So here's the, here's the thing. So obviously there are rationally contradictory things, like, God can't create another uncreated. That's a rationally contradictory statement. God can't do that. But wh when it comes to God entering into his creation by taking to himself a humanity, there's nothing rationally contradictory about doing that. That's well within the abilities of God to do, especially when you consider that Christians don't believe that it involves any change to the divinity. And we expressly say as much. Right now, now we well, it doesn't matter what you think. We Christians do say that we express it. But now, let now let me ask you a question. Now let me ask you a question. The the Quran that I have in a box at home, right? That Quran, right? Is that the eternal word of Allah in creation? Yes or no? Yeah. So. Again, you, you, you answered the question and you basically said uh, Jesus, or well, you didn't say Jesus, God can come into the come into earth, yeah, and he can basically have limitations, yeah. So, I don't, I don't think that's the case, man. I don't, I don't think that's the case, if I'm being honest with you, because you gave an example of things that God can't do out of his own nature, yeah. I'm saying to you, there's things that God can't do out of his nature. And where does where does that draw the line? Because I don't know where you get that information from and where I get my information on who's right and who's wrong. In terms of God's characteristics, what he can and cannot do, where do, where do Christians base that on? Wait, wait, bro, bro, bro. So, so where, do, where do Christians get the ideology that God can be a man? Where, where does it say that? And what's the stopping from being an animal? Or what's stopping God from being a tree? You know? Can like, I reply? I'm not, I'm not finished yet. Okay. So it's like, it doesn't really resonate with me too well because it's like, what's stopping him becoming a tree for argument's sake? You know? To us, he can't ever be creation because to be in creation is to be limited. And I don't think you've fully addressed that yet, man. Can I reply? Of course you can. Right. So thank you for admitting that sorry, Allah... Thank, thank, thank you for admitting that Allah can limit his attributes. Because I'm going to say God can be attributes. I said there's things. Bro, brother, brother, let me let, let me let, let me reply. I didn't interrupt you. And the best way for this, no, look, bro, no, 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 no. You can always come back. You can always come back. If we start interrupting one another, the whole conversation breaks down. You've been super civil. You've been super civil up to this point. So let's just keep it that way. If you've had enough, just call it a day. Right? Okay. So let's just keep it calm and civil. So, thank you for admitting that God can limit his attributes. Because you've just said, you've just said, that when, when it comes to the Quran, and by the way, you didn't actually answer my question. And I did answer your question several times. And just claiming that I didn't answer your question doesn't mean that I didn't. People will be able to judge from the video. Now, 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 uh, that doesn't matter to me. Now, in terms of, and again, if, if the, we just interrupt one another, the conversation will break down. So let's try and keep it civil. You've done great up to now. Now, if in terms of in terms of addressing the point, right? I have pointed out to you two examples where Muslims believe that Allah's attributes can be limited: the Quran and the glory of Allah. One of which, one of which is, and both of which are limited by creation. Now, 
Muslims don't infer from that a confusion or a change of the divine attribute. They don't say that the glory of Allah is somehow changed by the fact that it's limited by the veil of that Allah is created, or that the eternal nature of the Quran is changed by the fact that it is now coexistent in time and space, inseparable from paper and ink that exists in a box in my room. And now that logic that Muslims are using, they stole from Christianity. We Christians argued that from the fourth century. That's centuries before Islam even came along and you borrowed our theology to make your own theology make sense. Now I have addressed your question multiple times. I will address it again just to leave you without any excuse and just to demonstrate that there's nothing now but a rhetorical refrain from you and you're not actually paying attention. We believe that Christ took to himself a human nature and was fully like us. It is not in the way of humans to have access to all divine knowledge all of the time. All humans gain access to what is divine knowledge because all knowledge is the possession of God. We believe that in his human nature Christ did not have access to all divine knowledge but that doesn't mean that he didn't possess it. And I demonstrated in my earlier example about the cards and the keys that that is an example of a real distinction that makes sense because you live it in your real life. How would you like to reply? I don't think you can compare me losing my keys and then, and then suddenly remembering where I put them and then base that on, a, on, a, on how God saw works. I don't think you can do that. Um, just because I forget where my keys are, what's that got anything to do with God? I really don't understand what the point you're making. Um, you either have knowledge or you don't, right? And the fact that Jesus didn't have all knowledge um, to us is a big sort of, is a big problem. Sign of his humanity. So, yeah. Can I reply? I'm not, I'm not finished. Okay. Um, again, this is the thing, when you talk five minutes, I had other things I wanted to say, but just, this is what I want to keep as a conversation. Sorry, are you now are you letting him into this conversation? Because I will now reply to his no, point. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Hold I'm on one second. Fine, that's fine. Right, is he now in the you conversation? Sorry, you make you this choice. See, you're, you're trying to dictate the conversation. You said to me, I'm not allowed to dictate the conversation. And you can, no, I'm giving you the option. I'm not dictating. I'm saying no, you no, make no, a you choice. Do you I want him? him? I am asking you. Do you want him in the conversation? Well, if so you I'm say yes, I'll reply to what he says. You've made the point. You've made the point, and you basically said. God can limit himself yeah, because I forgot my keys once. It doesn't really make sense, man. Like we don't think God can. We don't think God can limit reduce, himself. We don't. We don't think God can limit do himself out of his God. godly nature. I don't say limit or, or whatever. I don't think God can do things outside of his godly nature. Yeah. So one of his godly nature is being all knowing. Um, okay. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't understand your point. Oh, I forgot my keys once. I remembered where they were. Oh, that means Jesus is the Son of God. But it doesn't really add up to me. Can I reply? Of course you can. Okay. Now, please know, I'm asking permission each time. No one's dictating the conversation to you. I literally ask you if I can reply. So the, the point is, what's your name, bro? Mustafa. Mustafa. The point is, Mustafa, and again, everyone will notice you have not addressed the argument about the veil and you haven't addressed the argument about the Quran. But I have addressed your question about knowledge multiple times. Now, to go back to you to point out something that you missed, Mustafa, and maybe it's just because you knew at this, right? I pointed out to you that there is a distinction between possession of knowledge and access to knowledge. And I gave the example of forgetting and remembering to demonstrate the reality of the distinction. You need to learn to follow an argument. The, the point that I'm making to you is that if it is possible for Allah to limit his attributes in Islam, which you believe that he does, even if you don't know that he does, even if you have cognitive dissonance over the fact that he does, does not then mean that you are justified in attacking Christianity because you employ the very defenses that Christians used centuries before Islam to get yourself out of the conundrum that you're trying to put Christianity in, which is the idea 
of Allah limiting his attributes. God limiting his attributes. I'm saying God can limit his attributes. You're saying he can't. So then you have to explain the veil and the Quran and how that isn't a limitation on God's attributes. Now, you mentioned about God's, you mentioned about God's nature and it's a very pertinent point, very pertinent. Because the God that you believe in and the God that I believe in are very different. The God that I believe in, his, his central characteristic is that God is love. So much that we Christians say, where there is love, there is God. That's how important it is to us, that God is love. Now, if you love someone, as you know, Mustafa, if you love someone, you will do things that denigrate your own nobility for the people that you love, your children, your wives, or your wife, depending on how many you've got, or, or, or any number of other people that you love, your mother. Like, would you not humiliate yourself to protect your mother? Of course you would, because you're a loving son. Whereas Allah, by contrast, is a fickle sovereign on a throne who emulates and esteems his own greatness more than anything else. And so, of course, that God would not enter into creation. But I don't believe in a fickle sovereign God. I believe in a loving God. And as you know, love will mean that you will do things that are beneath you. Doesn't mean that you've somehow lost your dignity, but that you do things that are beneath you because of your love. And that's exactly what we believe God did. We're not saying that, that these things weren't beneath God. We're saying they were beneath God, but God does them anyway because of his love. And that is a far more appealing God in my eyes than a tyrant, fickle, who sits on a throne and only ever speaks to you through letters and emails and messengers. Yeah. So the reasons why I'm not ask, uh, answering the questions of the veil, there's always other questions that you're asking me. It was you that was counting down. You were like, oh, going once, going twice, who's got a question? Yeah. I asked you the question of limitation and God. Correct. Yeah, I didn't even mention about me being a Muslim and me wanting to answer these questions. You're more than aware of like Islam and, and our views of limitations of God and what we believe, right? I simply asked you, the limitations of God, that's the only question that I ask you. So for you to come back and, and rebuttal and say, oh, you have to answer my questions, you're not answering my questions, you're not listening, you're new to this, how many wives do you have? It's, we're not talking about that. The initial discussion was you were counting down and I said to you, we're talking, I've got a question about Jesus, about his limitations of God, and that was my question. You're asking me about, oh, the Quran, you're asking me about all these sorts of the things. Veil the veil and yeah you, you said i've probably got four wives probably i didn't say that well you said how many have I, got? I said wives or wife yeah, depending well, on how many wives you've got and again, it's, not relevant, it's, not, it's not relevant at all and um it's just the question that i initially wanted answering is still not sufficiently answered now you can say you've answered it and if it's not good enough for you so be it i don't think it's good enough for anyone here I forgot my keys once. I know I remembered where it was. How is that? How is that applicable to, to the to the oneness of God and His true nature of being, you know, all knowing, you know, no need of, of water, no independent, you know. It doesn't answer the question. You can't give me an example of a human sort of characteristic that would make me believe that oh, you know what, Jesus came here, and yeah, he can be limited and limited. Yeah. Unlimited, unlimited at the same time. It's a contradiction to me, and for that reason, Bob, I don't, I don't really believe that. So you can, you can bring up the, the Quran and the veil. I don't even need to be a Muslim or have a faith to, to question, to have that sort of question. So you can, you can bring up the veil. You can bring up the Quran. And how are they co silent You know, it matters none. I can come here as an atheist and ask you that question. Just because you're answering questions that you're, you're pretty knowledgeable when you can slide your way in and out of these sort of. Uh, you can word yourself out of it and try and... Try I'll take that as a backhanded compliment. Well, whatever. You can take it how you want, but in my opinion, it still doesn't answer the question. You can you can throw stones in from glass houses all you want, but for me, it doesn't answer the question. You still haven't given me an example of how God can limit himself and that be logically making any sense. Um, so what stops God from dying? Can he die for us? Can Can... Can he fail to exist as the Father, the Spirit, the, the, everything? Can I reply? I mean, please show, show me sort of like evidence of, of, of how God could do that. Because to me, 
they would go outside of his, his, his godship to do it. And that's, that's the question you, you haven't answered. Outside of his godship, he can't do these things because he wouldn't be God. If God was to say, you know what, I'm going to decide, I'm not going to have all knowledge for eternity. Or I'm going to be limited. I'm going to have a, a short time here and I'm not going to be divine and unlimited. What's stopping your ideology from believing that? Can I reply? Right, so, so, so the first point, I want to point out again, you've not addressed the issue of the veil or the issue I, of the Quran. Sorry, wait sorry, one second. Sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I mentioned that I don't need to if you're getting, that, If you're getting because... tired, no, I'm not if you're getting tired. tired, if it's getting I, too I much for you, that. just take a step out, bro. If you can't, if you can't, if you're going to interrupt, you, you the me. whole conversation will break down. And I guarantee you'll sulk if I start interrupting you. Everyone who interrupts me always does. Well, You've do, right, thank you. So, in, in repl I'll just point out again, Mustafa, you haven't addressed the point of the veil and the Quran. Why is it pertinent to your original question? Because these are examples in Islam of Allah limiting himself. He, because his attributes are not him, but they are not separate from him. In other words, there cannot be a universe that exists in which Allah's word or Allah's glory exists independent from the existence of Allah himself. In other words, they are dependent existences. And so if Allah is limiting his word as he does in ink and paper, or he limits his glory as he does with the veil that he creates, then Allah has limited an attribute. And we are talking about an attribute, the knowledge, or more particular, more particular if you had listened carefully, Mustafa, we're not even talking about whether God in the incarnation limits his possession of divine knowledge. We're questioning, we're pointing out that God in the incarnation limits access. So it's the attribute of access to divine knowledge that is being limited, not knowledge itself. I hope I'm being really clear now. And I have answered this question several times, but I'll, I'll do it again. In what way can God limit himself? You asked. It, the way that he does it in a way that doesn't sustain a contradiction is this. By taking to himself a human nature that does not change his divine nature, if the limitations are encapsulated in the human nature, then that is how, and he experiences those, those limitations in that human nature, then that is how God can limit himself without change. But now let me ask you this question. How does Allah limit his glory by something that he creates and that not be the, how does that, how is that not the same by God limiting his access to divine knowledge by veiling himself in flesh? Yeah, of course. You're saying to me that I'm not listening, right? I don't think you're listening to me. Anymore. The point that I was making was I don't, I can come from an atheistic position, right? I don't, you don't need to give examples of Islam, of Judaism, of any type of ism, right? It's not relevant. I'm coming to you with a question. Yeah. Islam's not going to help you here. Right? Islam's not going to help you. Nothing's going to, I could be believing in evolution or whatever, right? It's not going to help you. Right? I'm asking a question where you don't need to say, oh, in, in the Quran or in Islam, look, there's this same ideology problem, there's this same contradicting problem. You don't need to say that. What's the question, bro? I want to hear the question. What's the question? Yeah, well, it's it's a, a, if you draw him in, I'm, 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 let's just, let's just finish our conversation. Yeah. I have a, I have a issue myself. I have to just focus, especially when you're talking for about 10 minutes. It's I promise like I you I'm not. It down, man. I it's promise you I'm not. Like 10 minutes when he's talking. I don't it's know. A lot of and it's, a, it's a lot of questions and it's a lot of going back and forth. The biggest issue I had with you, let me sort of repeat my argument again, was I don't need to, I don't need to come from any sort of, sort of perspective to ask you a question as to why this makes sense. Just because you can say, oh, it doesn't make sense in the Quran or Judaism says this. 
I want you to answer that with your own ideology, with your philosophy, right? And use your sources for that. You don't need to start quoting Islam. You don't need to start talking about the Quran. Oh, the veil of God. And the reason, again, I, you, you, are, you, you mentioned it, which is again a sign that you're not listening, Bob. You said to me, oh, you don't, you didn't ask, you didn't answer my questions about the veil. You didn't do this about. I asked you this. I asked you that. That wasn't. That, I came here. You, you were the one counting down. Again, I have to repeat myself. This is just. It's almost like people are watching this and just like keep repeating the same bit. I have to repeat myself because you're the one not listening. We're not going anywhere, we're going around in circles. I came to you and asked the question. I said to you, the, the limitations of God, where do you draw the line? And, and, and one of the things you didn't address necessarily, I said, can God become a tree? Can, can God do this? What, what is the end of his limitation? How far can he take it? Because one of them is he can limit himself, he can, in, in knowledge and all the rest of it, right? He can be dependent. How far can he take that down? Can he fail to exist completely? Right? That's one of the questions that I, I, I directly asked you. I said, can he be a tree? At what, to, to what extent can he lower his, his godship? That's something you, you were talking for like 15, 20 minutes, it seems. And, and mate, you're just waffling on and waffling on. You didn't answer none of it. You kept asking, talking about the veil and all the rest of it. You didn't answer nothing I said. You're saying that I'm not listening. I said to you, I don't need to talk about the veil. That's not the conversation at hand. You keep trying to make, make it comparable to Islam. Forget Islam, man. We're talking about Christianity here. This is your belief system. Can you not defend your belief system without saying, oh, the Quran is this, the Quran is that? Can I reply? So, so the, the questions that I want you to directly answer, firstly, I don't need to talk about the Quran. Just imagine I'm coming from a perspective of no religion, right? I'm asking you, as a, you're, I'm guessing you're a Christian, right? At what, to what extent- What gave can, it away? <laughs> to what extent can God sort of take down his sort of divinity? How low can he take it? Is, is my question to you. Okay. W without you asking, without you asking me, the veil, this, that, because like I said to you, I don't need to answer that. That's not the topic of discussion. We're talking about Christianity here. Can We're I talking about the limitations of God. And I'm asking you directly, how low can you take it? Can I reply? Okay. So firstly, you came to ask me a question. I answered your question and then you, you wanted to have a conversation and that's why we're having a conversation. And in a, in a conversation, it goes backwards and forwards. And, and the point that I've made to you that you keep missing, Mustafa, and I'll, I'll make it to you again, is that Muslims use Christian arguments to get Islam out of the very problem you're trying to put Christianity in. And that's exactly why the example of the veil and the example of the Quran are relevant. I know your Kalam better than you do. I know your Deen better than you do. And it, it, it's incumbent upon me to, to, to try and educate you and to help you, right? Because pride in our muscles is not the same as pride in our intellect, right? And we shouldn't have pride at all. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is if you, if you can't answer the very question you're asking, when the very question you're asking uh, puts Islam in a problem, or rather, and this is more pertinent to the original question, you can't see the parallel of the answer that I gave to defend the Christian position as already existing in the Islamic position. To get Islam out of the very conundrum that your question would put it in, then there's no help in you, bro, Mustafa. Like, you're just not able to follow an argument. Now, to answer your question, how far can God limit his divinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting there. I'm getting there which is better than you because you haven't got there at all. You haven't answered one of my questions and you haven't been able to answer one of my questions because when you try to answer one of the questions, your whole argument becomes unstuck, right? And that, my friend, and that, my friend, is not waffles. That's just facts. Now, so I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to. But if I interrupt you, you'll complain. So don't interrupt, don't interrupt, because I'll start interrupting you, the whole conversation break. Are you sure? Okay, great. So now, to answer your question directly, God limits his nature, accord. God limits his divinity in human nature according to his nature. His nature is love. His nature, how low, how low can that limitation go? I'm, you've got to pay attention, Mustafa. I'm answering that question. If you, if you interrupt less, 
you'll hear the answer. Yeah? I've interrupted twice now. Yeah, multiple I'm just, times. I'm trying to direct you to multiple the times. Like 10 minutes ago. Multiple times. I'm, I'm literally just let, let's 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 and, and I hope you remember this behavior when I start interrupting you. So now let me ask so to answer your question, he does so according to his nature. His nature is love and the object of his creation, the object of his love is man. And so he limits himself to the form of man. That's how low it goes. Now let me ask you a question again. How can it be that Allah's glory can be limited by a veil that Allah creates? Feel free to interrupt me if I'm saying anything that goes. I will. Feel free to... Against my question. No, no problem. So what was my question? The question was about the veil and how, how does that sort of... I have a, I have a contradiction problem because if I'm uh, saying... The question God, is, I'll state it again because you didn't hear it because you're not listening. How can, question, Allah, how can Allah, how can Allah limit, how can said, Allah limit his go. glory? And I answered that, I said human. So how, human uh, uh, you heard it, there you go, that's, that's twice now. Mm -hmm. So you see, if you pay attention, Mustafa, it helps. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, in terms of the question, my question is this, how can Allah create a veil that limits his glory? Mm. That's the question. So, like I said, you didn't answer. You said, how low can it go, right? And you said human form is the lowest it can go. Which is the answer to the question. So Thank the you. The question. There so, we go. I'm so glad we agree. You, so now my you, question. Why can't he become a tree? What's why my question? Why can't he become a pigeon? Answering, a, that's not my question. Leaf. That, What's that, my that's question? What, that's what I asked you. you What's said my you question? It and I said, how low can God go? And I answered that. You I said, said human. human there you go. Thank you. Right? So you've admitted that I did answer the question. So not, now you not, answer not my question. So now you answer my question. And the question is, how does Allah create a veil that limits his glory? You, you haven't answered my question. Go on, answer that you question. My question fully. You know, you're Mustafa, running you, Mustafa you, from the question. God from being a tree? Mustafa, if you're God running from the question. I'm really not. I asked Mustafa, you a question. you're running from the question. What was the question? The question that I asked you. What was the question I asked you? What was the question I asked you, Mustafa? What, what, what was the question I asked you? It's hard, it's hard to follow you. What was the question it's, it's I asked you? No, that, no, you did. You, you, you repeated the question. On, so you did follow minutes. me. So now you're lying. You, you asked me about, This is about just the veil. rhetoric, Mustafa. The answer the, the question. The yes, so answer the question. Answer the question about the veil. I've answered your question. You asked me how low can it go? I said human. And you repeated the answer, Again, thus elaborate. demonstrating elaborate. that I'll do that next. Uh, uh, that demonstrates that I did answer elaborate the question. You, you so now you answer my question. How can Allah create a veil that limits his infinite glory? So you haven't answered my question. You're running from the question, Mustafa. You're running from the question. Answer the question that I asked you. What's the question I asked you? Answer the question I asked you. And I, I answer you, you and you've you demonstrated you that I answered word, that human, question. Human. Look, Mustafa, That's this conversation, me. exactly as predicted, mm. when you said we can just interrupt one another, course, has now it? broken down. No, it, has. it has, because you're, you, you, I've demonstrated all that you're not answering now, the question. Now is I'm highlighting the fact that, that I've answered the question you, by repeating my answer. I, uh, but you have failed to answer the question that I've asked you. And I don't no, blame you. That after. And the reason why I don't blame you is because Islam is intellectually bankrupt. Okay. And the Dawagandists and these Dawagandist arguments are built on double standards. Mm -hmm. They're built on straw manning Christianity and not even having an appreciation of your own deen have you, as you my brother have amply demonstrated. No, no, no. It's up to him whether you get to come into this conversation. I think we're finishing. I think we're finishing. Right. We are indeed done. We are indeed done. My initial response was you asked if there's a question you didn't say do you want to have a debate do you want to have a conversation back and forth where we're not going to interrupt each other but i come up to you and i said to you how i was asking you about the limitations my question hasn't changed right? i said to you why i answered it multiple times i answered it multiple times yeah, I yeah, answered yeah, it yeah, multiple answer times. You didn't say it. No, I really did, and the you cameras will show it. Cannot, cannot, cannot the cameras, will, the camera the evidence so will demonstrate that. that this is just rhetoric. No, All it you've it got it you is why. empty air and, and loud go, noise. You haven't been able to answer a single question. Mustafa, do you want? Shall we bring this to a stop? Because it's not going anywhere anymore. You look after yourself. Take care. Right. Do you two want to come in now? No, no, I was just asking a question. I, Sorry? 
I was asking a question. Uh, What's your question? No, no, when you guys were talking, for the ones I could understand, what was the purpose of his question? What did he mean by limits? So can I, can well, he, he, that's a question for him, not for me. Do you want to ask me a question? Yeah, go on. What's going to be very brief? In the Christian doctrine, yeah. Are you Trinitarian, Unitarian? There's only, look, brother. That's like asking, do you worship Muhammad? Do you don't worship Muhammad? No, because if you said if I'm Shia Sunni, I just want to say. No, 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 no. No, hold on one second. That question, that question is like asking a Muslim, do you worship Muhammad? It's not a relevant question. It, it, like, is it relevant to Islam if I ask you, do you worship Muhammad? I would say no. Exactly. Exactly. So ask a sensible question. Fine. My sensible question is, because I've spoken to some children, they yeah. say that the Father's greatest, and then they say the Son and the Holy Spirit are lesser. Some people say it's equal, yeah. and some people say, well, those people aren't Trinitarians, so I don't want to cast any accusations. I just want to get a base. I don't want to insult you. That's hence my question. Let you say your stance. I didn't mean to insult you. I'm very sorry. That came as okay, so, so to answer your question. I haven't finished. Oh, sorry. Go on. Do you believe that the Father is the greatest? And why? If, if so, why? Um, do you believe there's a hierarchy among the Trinity? I think it's the crux of the question. Is there a hierarchy among the Trinity? Is the Father at the top, um, or is someone else at the top, um, or are they co-equal? That's pretty much it. Is it a hierarchy, co-equal? Okay, okay, so to answer your question, you. as a Christian, I'm not committed, nor do I need to defend imaginative Christians, fictional Christians, or ignorant Christians. And so whether your Christians are imaginative, fictional, or just ignorant, um, I don't need to defend their position. I only need to defend the Christian position. And the, the Christian position is that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are co-equal. Now, at the incarnation, Jesus says... Can the Sorry, yeah, I well, okay. I well, I, I, do you want to do question for question? No, I just want to follow along and understand. Okay, so fair enough, that's fine. Thank you. So by the incarnation, what we mean is that the divine Logos, the eternal word of God, takes to himself a human form and fills it with his person. That is literally what we mean by the incarnation. It literally means to be tabernacled or to be intended in flesh. Like, in the same way, and this is the point that Mustafa didn't understand, in the same way that Muslims believe that the Quran that is in a box in my bedroom is literally the eternal word of Allah, but yet it is coexistent in time and space in a book on paper and ink inside a box in a room in London. Now, that, that, that is what we mean by the incarnation. So to continue my original answer, yeah, to continue with my answer now that I've explained what incarnation is, at the incarnation, the son takes the form of a servant. He takes the form of a man, yeah, yeah. which is obviously less than God. Limited, more limited. It, is, it is limited, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm yes, that. absolutely, it's limited. And so when Christ is, uh, is in the, uh, at the incarnation, Christ rightly says, the Father is greater than I. Yeah, because the Father is not incarnated, the Son is incarnated. And as we both agree, the human position is lower than the 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 the, the, the divine position but but the the but the hierarchy exists because of the human nature not because of the divine nature fantastic thank you that was a very comprehensive answer so when we say hierarchy because they're co-equal there isn't really a hierarchy as such it's just because of the incarnation aspect yeah so i guess my question now and it's purely from an understanding perspective that's why we all ask questions. Fair enough. Um, is if Christ was limited. Thank you. Well, he was limited. He was, no one's disputing that. Yeah, yeah, no. He was limited. Yeah. Is there an argument to say that Christ is lesser than the Father because he was limited at some point in time? Bear in mind, let's say you and me have been the top tennis champions. Oh, I'll get the question ago. without the analogy. I can answer it without no, the no, analogy. No, no, I just want to say. Just Fair enough, the, go on. It helps me. Sure, absolutely. It helps go for it, yeah. Please. Yeah. We've been the top two contenders. We've been joint yeah. in tennis, right? You break your arm, you can't play tennis anymore. Yeah. You're limited yeah. in, the, in the game of tennis. Yes. Again, I don't want to, you know, in the game of tennis, you're limited. Can someone say, someone can make the argument that you were lesser than me because for a time, a point, uh, you know, for a, a fixed period of time, yep. and you could say that was the duration of Christ's lifetime, I guess that's fair to say, the duration of Christ's lifetime didn't have godly attributes, therefore wasn't God. 
and therefore is lesser than God because of the time uh, delta, right? One was God for much longer, had full attributes, one never relinquished godly godliness, godhood, whereas the other one did in the incarnation. Phase. Can I reply? Just let me, let me wrap up. So bringing back to our... It's just you're making a number of errors that I have to correct. You can, but again, we, we, we're having the civil yeah, discussion. Of course. If that's okay, we can respect that. Um, so my, my question, the, the crux of it is, and I don't really want to talk about Islam and things because it is purely an understanding point of view, is if Christ was limited for a certain period of time, for a certain for the duration of the incarnation, can you make the argument that he was less than God? If so, if not, why not? So, so the answer is, I've got to correct a number of errors that you made. Okay. So Christians don't believe that, that Christ put off divine attributes to enter into his humanity. That's uh, an erroneous doctrine called kenosis, and Christians don't believe in that. I'm just going right? to so, so Christ maintains unchanged, unconfused, unmingled, and uh, in, in, in a continuous way, all of his divine attributes. But he takes to himself limitations in a humanity, uh, 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 in the incarnation. And as a human, Christ himself says, not me, Christ himself says that the Father is greater than I. But that is not talking about his divine nature. That is talking about his position as a human being. Now, this conversation isn't just going to be about Christianity, it's going to be about Islam as well. That's fine, that's fine. I also, I also want to ask questions. I also want to learn in the spirit of understanding. Perhaps you can answer the question Mustafa didn't answer. Now, in, 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 are you two like cheerleaders? Like, it's in a tag team. Yeah. Right. So, so here's the, here's the question. Yeah, yeah, so. The, 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 the question that I want to ask you is how does Allah create a veil Sorry, you didn't that limits your question. No one, I did. I did. I said in his human nature, so in his human unglorified nature, Christ himself says the Father is greater than I. Okay. Now, that is not talking about his divinity. That is the answer. Now, my question to you is how does Allah create a veil, so it's a created thing, that now has the power to limit his infinite divine glory. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I'm satisfied with your answer from a, you know, from a Christian theological perspective. Um, and again, just to summarize for my understanding, okay. before I go on to my answer, sorry, is that during the incarnation, Christ didn't lose any divine attributes. You Correct. Know what you're doing. He didn't give away anything. Correct. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Nothing was mingled. Nothing, Nothing was is to be confused. So Nothing was, was mixed. There was no dual nature, divine no, nature, the, the, human nature. So there's no. So. I hear a lot of things. I just we've got, we got to be clear about our words. I'm asking you. Yeah, and I'm trying to be clear. Please. So what we say is, without confusion, without mingling, yes. and without change, and without separation. Right. Right. Now, by analogy, to help you understand what I mean by that, yeah, let's go back to it's exactly the same. My analogy for the incarnation is your doctrine about the Quran. You believe that the Quran is the eternal word of Allah. Well, I believe anything. Well, I actually, yeah, I did make an assumption there. I apologise. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not a Muslim. Um, but we, 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 maybe I'm asking from a yeah, maybe, maybe. But maybe you're not a Muslim. Maybe you do, you say that Allah. Maybe this argument is hypothetical. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, but as Muslims believe, but it shouldn't be relevant, I'm still, right? one, one second, it's not I'm, no, it is relevant, it okay, really fine. is relevant. You can come back and make it relevant. Yeah, it really is relevant. Please. So the, 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 the analogy that I'm using to demonstrate what I've just said about the incarnation is the Muslim doctrine, which I suspect <laughs> you believe, which is that the Quran is literally the eternal word of Allah that can be found on ink and paper. And all those people in Saudi Arabia that flushing Qurans down the toilet, what they're doing is that they're damaging income paper. They're not damaging the eternal word of Allah because the two never are separate. They can't be talked about as being separate things, but they're not mixed, they're not mingled, and they're not to be confused. Okay, fine. So, and I guess this comes back to the fact that you said that the, there's no intermingling between the non-divinity and the divinity nature. The yeah, they're not mingled. Not mingled, but during the incarnation, 
what's the best label to give Christ while he walks on this earth? While he says the Father is greater than I am. Yeah. Is it divine or is it human? Can I answer that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The answer is exactly what the church has taught for over 2,000 years. Which, sorry, not over 2,000, 2,000 years. Right. Which is that Christ is fully man and fully God. And we've taught that conclusively and, and for millennia. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know? But if it's both, how have can a they not intermingle? Uh, let, let him ask all yeah, of yeah. his questions, Faraz, and then you can jump in. If, if it's not intermingling, how can it be fully man and fully God? That contradicts me. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Well, well let me... Let me for me, it does. Please so, 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 you, it, for example, there, there's many examples in nature where things have dual properties. Yeah, yeah. So light has the property of wave and particle. I'm sure you know what the triple point of, you know, what, what a triple point is in terms of a chemical substance. Yes. It has properties of solid, liquid and gas all at the same time. Yes. So, so this is, if, if we can envision that in creation, your choice is to either accuse the creator of creating a contradictory creation or to accept that things can have multiple properties in simultaneous, uh, in multiple different properties simultaneously at the same point in time. Point in time. Sure. And, and, and so there's no contradiction entailed. Now, uh, my, my, my question to you, I notice, was not answered. No, but my, I wanted to finish that my, point. My, yeah, my question to you, my, my question yeah, remains repeat. to you unanswered, which is this. How does Allah create a veil that limits his eternal infinite yeah, glory? We get to the veil part. I have to say, when you refer to the veil, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the shank. You can elaborate like you did with incarnation. Okay, so in al tirmidhi right, it says... The, uh, um, when, when Muhammad goes up to the highest heavens and he goes before Allah, one of the questions that Aisha asks him is, did you see your Lord? And Muhammad replies, how could I see my Lord? He is veiled in light. And in another hadith, it says that the veil of Allah is there because if it wasn't there, the glory of Allah would destroy all for as far as Allah could see. Now that obviously is saying everything because Allah can see everything. So what you've got is an infinite power of glory being limited by a created veil. Now, my question to you is, right, does it entail any kind of contradiction for Allah to limit his divine attribute through a created thing? So my question again. Yeah, yeah, please. Is guys, and he doesn't want to be on camera, so let's just leave the cameras I, I where they're. I am backing up, but all the cameras are yeah, coming. So yeah, yeah. Let's just, uh, they, yeah. yeah. Don't move the camera. So, so my question is this: Does it entail a contradiction mm -hmm. for Allah to have infinite, eternal glory that can destroy everything, all created things, all that Allah can see, including the veil, because Allah can see the veil? And Allah created the veil. Does it entail a contradiction to say that Allah's veil limits his eternal divine glory? That's a great question. It is, isn't so, it? And I'll say the first point of the question, does it contradict the divinity of God and the supremeness of God? I'm going to say no. Thank you. That's the answer that we've given. The reason I say that is because God can do many things and God desires to do things. The ability and the desire of things are different, I, I would argue. Yes. I don't like saying this, but... I could Later, no, Firaz. Um, let me finish with him. Sorry. I could punch someone right now. I could. But do I want to? No. And the ability and the desire to do things are two very distinct things. Right? Yeah. Allah, Allah can execute whatever action he desires, whether that be a thunderstorm right now, whether, and we just saw rain, yeah. or whether that be uh, a forest fire, for yeah. example. He can do those things. But whether he chooses to do it is obviously up to him and the divine will. And, and every, people call it fate, they call it destiny, they call it many things. Now, onto that specific example of the idea of the veil blocking the destruction of all creation. That's what ultimately says, yes. Yes, yeah, that's absolutely fine. My question, I, I don't want to ask a question with a question, but my clarification, the request of clarification, and you will not be able to answer this, is A, what constitutes the veil? Is it a physical thing, that, as we know a veil, to drape over someone's head? Or is it a, um, a metaphysical barrier that actually blocks things between realms or between states of matter? Then we move on to, and regardless of what the answer is, ultimately it comes down to, the ability of Allah to destroy all of creation 
isn't taken away by the fact that he doesn't desire for creation to be destroyed, which is why the veil is there, because the veil could be rhetorical in the way that Allah does not want to destroy everything, and that could be described as a veil or a barrier in that way. So to cycle back, we say that it doesn't contradict the doctrine because God is not limiting the, you know, the destructive capability that he has in the sense that he destroys everything he can see. But we would say that God simply does not want to destroy everything that he can see. And therefore, this veil, which may not be a physical thing, which may not be a creation, I think, I hopefully you can appreciate that. It could be a rhetorical idea or a concept of God not wanting to destroy all of creation because he loves us, because it's not within his divine plan. Again, to, to, to um, speculate about the reasons of God is, you know, we can do it all day. But that would be the crux of the argument. The ability and the desire of an action are two very different things. God has the supreme will to do both, or any, or one. And that brings us to the argument that this idea of a veil does not contradict the idea of God and his all-powerfulness, because at the end of the day, God placed this veil there in an attempt for, for whatever his desire was. Can he I reply? Used the ability, he used the ability, available, can't talk, the ability to pass the veil. You're doing fine, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's my first time. I'm sorry. You can tell. Um, he used the ability to cast the veil because of de a desire not to destroy. But he didn't use his ability to destroy because he didn't desire. Can I reply now? I think I've made my point. So yeah, yeah. and, and you, thank you very much for actually trying to tackle the question. I, tried. I do I tried. appreciate. No, you've done a very good tackling Thanks of the question. As well. But 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 the 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 problem with your argument is this. Now, obviously, it depends what kind of Muslim you are, and obviously, if you belong to one of the groups of Muslims that deny the veil as a real thing. I did, and, I, I, and, and, I didn't and, make any and, and, and interpret of what the interpret is. I just and interpret and it, well well here's and this is this is where we need to pin you down because depending on which kind of muslim you are like if you because your argument essentially says that the hadith's description of a veil it's purely metaphorical. I didn't say no, that. I wait, 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 right. I just want to correct you. Let, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll say sorry, the sorry. same thing that I said to Mustafa. If we interrupt one another, sorry, the whole conversation is going to break down, yeah? And so I would ask you not to interrupt, because I didn't interrupt you. It's my first time, sorry. Right. So, the, 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 the argument that you've made, whether you like the consequences of the argument or not, is simply this. If your argument is to be sustained as the answer, and by the way, I think it's a very creative answer, Thank you. but the, if it is to be sustained, it logically follows that you have to deny the veil as an actual thing. And if you're denying the veil as an actual thing and you're turning it into a metaphor for a decision of God, right? That God is making a sovereign decision over his attributes, right? then that means you have to argue that the veil is not real. But the, but, but the problem with that is that that is not what the hadith say. The hadith speak and Muhammad speaks very categorically about the veil being an actual thing, not simply a, a, a word metaphor for a concept. Right? I don't know. But here's where the contradiction rubs. So listen carefully. This is the crucial bit. The hadith states that the veil stops the glory of Allah destroying the whole of creation as far as the eyes of Allah can see. If Allah can see the veil and Allah created the veil, then why does the glory of Allah not destroy the veil as well? That's the contradiction. Now, your answer is very creative. It is a sustainable argument. I'm helping you now because it's your first time. Thanks. If you hold that line of argument, you are going to get out of my problem. I know. Right? So I want to ask you, do you deny the veil as a real thing and interpret the hadiths, all the hadiths that talk about the veil as a real thing, as being simply a metaphor for a decision of God? Is that what you actually believe? Is that your hack? Is that your dean? Because if you're willing to commit to that, then we'll progress the conversation along those lines. 
Right, so first I'll come back to my original point, because again there was a misconception on your end. I didn't suggest that the veil was metaphysical, I said it could be, because I don't know at this state of time. I haven't read the hadith from Tirmidhi. I would love to see the reference so I could study it later. So if you could provide it, that would be great. But that's for later. I didn't say it was metaphysical, I said it could be. And I think it's different from saying it is something. You know, I can say you're wearing green, I could say you're wearing a turquoisey colour. You know, could, couldn't, different. Could be a physical thing, could be a metaphysical thing. And I did specifically state that the notion of it being physical or metaphysical really doesn't matter at the end of the day because of the argument, and you called it creative, of God's desire to do something being different to God executing something. So, and, and to bring that back into a point, is that if it was, if the veil was physical, like you're arguing, like you suggest the Hadith say, and again, I can't confirm that as the Huck because I haven't studied it myself. It would be foolish of me to say this is the hut. If you tell me what kind of Muslim you are, I might be able to tell you what your deen teaches. Right, which kind of Sunni? In, in what sense? Are you Salafi? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hanafi. Hanafi. I, you should have asked what school I belong to. Well, that's a, that's a school of fiqh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's fine, fine. That's uh, more... Hanafi, I give you answer. No, okay, fair enough. Well, I, in my understanding, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but the Hanafi position is that the veil is a real thing. Study that and I'll learn and feel free to come back and correct me because I'm not 100 percent certain of that myself. For instance, I know Muhammad Hijab is Hanafi or very close to Hanafi, and he believes that the veil is a created thing. Hashim is Hanafi, I believe. These are just guys, by the way. I may not subscribe to their granted. But but my point is, until until someone proves otherwise, I'm working on the assumption that the Hanafi believe that the the veil is an actual thing not simply a metaphor for a concept. So let's draw the benchmark. This argument is based on an assumption. Yes. Because you just said, you've used the word assumption. We can, yes. Because um, I come from a mathematical background, we do proofs. Yeah. You, you start a proof by an assumption. Right? Agreed. N equals one, N equals That is fine, yeah. So that's the benchmark we've said. Well, my argument, as creative as it was, does say that that benchmark doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Because if Allah willed for something not to be the case, can I, can I reply to um, that? Actually, I just wanted to yeah, say, go on. because um, we did get distracted by asking what kind of Muslim I am. Uh, True. Yeah, so it's just um, in, in that sense, I think we can wrap up quite soon because I don't really have much else to say. But rather, the idea of the veil being physical or non-physical doesn't matter if Allah didn't will to destroy everything. And I think that's the key point uh, that we're saying because the event of the veil being created as you argue that assumption that's there did happen but the destruction of all life on earth didn't happen so we can therefore say that it was within Allah's defined plan to not destroy everything within the uh, within within the current creation does that suffice uh, and right no and here's why it, it doesn't suffice yeah. for this reason yes. one um, that because if it turns out to be the position, and I'm trying to research it while you were talking, but I think I, I ran out of time. If the position is that the veil is a real thing, then you really do have a, a deep contradiction inside of Islamic theology. Because Allah can see his own veil, the veil is created, so why does Allah's glory not destroy the veil? Because it says Allah's glory would destroy all that he can see. Is that the question? Right? No, 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 I, I'm just making a point. Now, your argument, the creative one, that I am, you also have a, a duty to establish that as the dean, right? Because, it's yes, just, just yes, yes, because, here, here's why. Okay. Because if you're defending something that's not actually the dean of Islam, yeah, if you're defending something that's not actually the dean of Islam, yep. then, then your argument collapses, you know that. Could be heresy, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a Mutazilite saying, well, I'll get around all the problems yeah. inside the idea of an eternal Quran by saying that the Quran is created. Sure. And they get around it. Yeah, so but that's, saying, that's, that's not, yes, that's, that's, that's not, that's, that's yeah. not, yeah. brother, yeah. brother, yeah. focus on me. Right, Mustafa is just losing. Mustafa is losing his manners. Mustafa is is losing his manners. Stay focused. So, so right. I, I mean, I'm happy to have a conversation with you both, but you, but then, no, but but if he's talking to you while I'm talking to you, you then have to make a choice about whether you're going to be polite to me, your interlocutor, by listening to me or not. Absolutely. Do you want to go back to the idea of the Mustali? So, as you well know, 
If you're arguing a heretical position, your defence collapses. So just as now I have a duty to try and demonstrate that the veil is created, if you want to sustain the defence that it's just a metaphor, you have to demonstrate that argument so as the dean. Is a the so idea what that, to prove to that, you? that that are you losing track of your own argument, bro? Yeah, sorry. Right. Here's here's what you said, yeah. and it was a very creative argument. You said. I don't think it exits. So just before you said my argument, I don't think it exits the confine of Islam. Right. So so. You said that the veil is not an actual thing. No, 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 I didn't. That was not my No, argument. hold on one second. You, this is ex... I didn't say that. No, you did. No, no, I said right. it could well, not be a... Right, but that's the point. Your defence hinges on that could. Yes. That, thank you. Absolutely. So, therefore, therefore, because. following the argument, and let's not interrupt one another because the conversation breaks down. Therefore, it is on you now to demonstrate whether you've just argued from the Dean or not. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't argued from the Dean, the defence collapses because the could goes the other way. Yeah, yeah. And if the could goes the other way, my argument is sustained. And my argument, now you do math so you can follow this. Yes, I've got a math. math Thank you. This. So you know, right, yeah. not to this you haven't. No, no, to, I, I do. Not yeah, do, I do. so, 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 what you're so, to say so, so a right, course. thank you. So, yes, to the logic of what I'm saying. Yes. So, in terms of if your argument collapses, my argument is sustained. If the could goes in the opposite, di yeah, in the opposite direction. So I'm going to, whilst, whilst I'm talking, you should be looking up to see whether the veil's created. And when you're talking, I need to be doing it. Because one of us is right and one of us is wrong. Absolutely. Now, hold on one second. You may never know. That's the bringing, it back to the, bringing it back to the incarnation. What right? Incarnation? The incarnation of Christ. Of Jesus? Yes. Oh, I wanted to yeah. talk about something else. If that's okay. well, you want to ask a different question? No, I wanted to talk about the point that I made. In the sense All right, we'll focus on that. You mentioned that I made the point that the veil could be metaphysical, and that's a very. I said that. Go ahead. Uh, Bob, right, I'm going to reply to what he says. Go yeah. on. So, Bob, just don't take too long. Bob, I just thought it was kind of comical. Yeah, you've been you brought this whole veil thing to me for about 20 minutes when we was having a discussion, and you had to Google yourself. You don't even know if it's physical or not. You've had to ask him, what's your position? Oh, oh, I think from your Hanafi perspective, I think it's physical. Oh, hijab yeah. said this, hijab yeah. said that. It, it makes no sense. It's not relevant. The, the entire time, you don't even know. You Can I reply? Know, Bob. You don't even know. Can I, I reply? It's extremely dishonest, disingenuous to, to make a point, right? And this gentleman's already come to you here. He said to you from the very beginning, he doesn't even, he, he, does, he hasn't even heard of this veil sort of yeah, argument. I, I, I and I'm going to be tell. honest with you, I didn't either. And it's almost like you think you've got like a, you think you've got like a trump card with us on this one. You feel like, oh, here, this is this is something I can use against all the Muslims. Here's this veil argument. We, I didn't want to argue that when I first asked you. He, he said to you, he knows nothing about it, and you're forcing him to have a position on it. Is it physical? Is it not? He hasn't read it. Can I reply? He hasn't understand the context. Thing. Can I? And this whole argument is based on something that he didn't even know existed, and you're having to Google can what, I reply? what your position is. Right. Let me reply. Is that right? So, so let me reply to Mustafa's point. So, so, you can reply to him. so, so the point, the reason why it became uh, important to demonstrate who's right and who's wrong yes. is because it became a crux of a particular point in the argument. I wouldn't say so. Right? I, I disagree. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. And, and, and if you keep interrupting me, I'm going to start interrupting you and you will start complaining. I, I don't want to. Right. Now, to prove to the point that I am correct in saying that the veil is a real thing, I'm going to quote a Muslim scholar from Islam, Islamweb.net. And on, in islamweb.net, uh, the, the fatwa that is given in answer to how should we understand the veil, not going to read the whole hadith because that will use up you too much time, just going to go to the relevant point, it is a real veil. Okay. Yeah? Can you go to the citation yeah. as well please? Yeah. Islam.net. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So the explanation of, that. explanation, that explanation, not, explanation of of the hadith, his veil is light. That's okay? okay. Now, so I've demonstrated, on, I've demonstrated by, you wanted the citation, the I've, well. I've demonstrated the citation, fatwa number 245737 from islamweb.net.
Okay. Now, now I, I'm going to start interrupting you now because no, no, you've been no, interrupting me. Con you. No, I'm going to start interrupting you unless you want to apologize. Unless you want to apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay. Thank you. Don't, let's not inter Let me finish then. Let me finish then. So I've now. Yes, of course. I'm just going to take a photo. Yes, absolutely. Islamweb.net. Fatwa. I'll just pause and then I'll speak later. Fatwa two four. Because I'd, I'd love to learn this. Islamweb.net. Yeah. Right, and let's go to the answer so you can That's see enough. that as well. But I, I'll read it. It is a real veil, Great. as evidenced, and then he goes on to cite other hadiths, okay? So he's citing hadiths to demonstrate that it is a real veil. Sure. I can read them if you want to, but I'm, you're competent to read them yourself. Thank you. Now, my point to you is this. Yes. I have now demonstrated that the veil is a real thing, not a hypothetical thing, not a metaphor for a concept. So the could be has been answered. Correct. It is no longer a could be. It is a real thing, which means, as we agreed earlier, your defense has collapsed. My argument is sustained, right? There is a contradiction inside Islamic theology. My theology or Islamic? Islamic theology. I don't know if you hold to Islamic theology. Yeah, that's the, that's Never the stated that you hold to Islamic yeah. theology. I made an Sorry. assumption and I've always worked on that assumption. Now, in, in, in terms of the Islamic theology, there is a contradiction because, because the between the veil the limiting the glory of Allah, right? And it being a created thing limiting Allah's eternal infinite glory. Bearing in mind that it says that everything Allah see would be destroyed. And can Allah not see the veil? Is he blind to the veil or can he see it? If he can see it, then it should be destroyed by his glory. If he can't see it, then Allah is blind. How does that work? Feel free. Brother, don't interrupt. Yes, you are. You are interrupting. You are interrupting. He says, oh, oh, he says, don't interrupt. But the moment he finds out he's a Muslim, he's suddenly okay with it. No, brother, our, our conversation will end. I, brother, ask Lamy. Yeah, talk, talk to me, bro. No, talk. I'm not talking to him. He owes me 500 quid. I, he's a, not a man of his word. I'm not interested in talking to him. I will let him permit right. to talk. But if you don't want to talk to him, that's your if problem. You, I, I will not engage in any conversation that he's a part of. You've made your point. You don't want to talk. So, go on. I want to talk to you. Okay. So, you made some points. Uh, you got the, the fatwa yep. from Islamweb.net. Yes. Previously, you asked me about my position as a Hanafi Sunni Muslim. Yeah. My question to you, because you brought this claim of the fatwa. Oh, when I say you brought it, you've shown it to the, to the argument. Yep. I didn't bring it here. Yeah. Um, can you now ascertain whether this fatwa applies to a Hanafi Sunni like myself? Because that is pertinent as you mentioned. Yes, before. that's a very pertinent question. It's that, that, a fair that's question. What I was trying to say before, it's a fair I'm question. Sure. So I just wanted to make sure that if you didn't answer that or not. Now, if we can't say that, then this goes back to being an assumption for me as a Hanafi Muslim, correct? Yeah. The argument is still based on your assumption whether the veil is metaphysical or real. And I will answer the, uh, the you know, the, the, the nature of the veil in, in terms of metaphysical side, don't worry. But I'll just let you bring that forward. While you do that, I'll let you make your point. But shall I keep going on, on my argument? Right. So, so, so. Because you made another point there as well. So, so let me, let me, let, let me come forward. I, I'm going to search. I am going to search for it. I am going to find it. If, so, so, no, I, no, I want to, I want to say something. Right, because because the the, 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 the the crux of the question is, however it's done, can Allah limit His attributes? Can God limit His attributes? That no, that, that's the whole point of this debate. That's exactly what. No, no. I'm, again, I'm being very patient with you. Like, right? Okay, I accept your apology. So, so the problem is that the, the, this whole debate is based around whether. God can limit his attributes. And I'm demonstrating, this is just one of my two arguments, yeah. that Allah limits his own attributes. Right. And thus, criticizing Christianity for God limiting his own attributes in Christ is not a sustainable argument. Yeah? yeah? Right? Okay, so, so that's what I'm saying. Go on. So, in the middle of my point, when I mentioned the idea of, this is my cousin. Right. This is, so, the idea of, if, if I'm a Hanafi Muslim, a Hanafi Sunni Muslim, does this fatwa apply to me? You've brought that evidence, you need to support your claim. Now, we go back to the argument of, you said that whether the veil is real, i.e. physical, created, that destabilizes my argument. 
Um, and then you also brought up something else which we've trailed off. Oh, you brought up the idea that my the, cru the crux of my argument was if the veil was physical or not. But I very clearly state, and you did misinterpret, was that the crux of my argument was that Allah's abilities, i.e. his capabilities, are different from his desires. And I made the point where I can punch someone, I have the capability, I have arms, and I'm a pretty strong guy, I can punch someone, but I don't want to, I don't have the desire to execute that action. Yep. And that was the crux of my argument, which you missed because you said that it was about the vertical physical field. Right, sir, I need to pay attention to this because you're saying that I missed your argument once you and I was reading. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. So, if I'm quoting you correctly, you said that my argument was based on the crux of whether the veil was metaphysical or physical. That is exactly what you base your argument on. I yeah, you I, said could. So, oh, yes. And could. you repeated it. So it was a possibility. Yes. It's an assumption. Yes. But it wasn't the crux of the. It wasn't the main point of the argument that I was bringing. It's actually irrelevant to the argument really because isn't. The, I, the actions of God can be different from. Sorry, the capabilities of God can be different from the desires of God. We know very clearly that whatever God wills becomes the actions of God, and that becomes, um, you know, inactive. Let's say that's the root word of the word action. Sorry, I'm waffling. So. That was the crux of the argument, which I think we've diverted from talking about the veil. I'm happy to talk about the veil because you brought forward something. Um, and whether that applies to me, you're still determining because you know I'm a Hanafi Sunni Muslim. And this uh, fatwa may or may not apply to me. Um, and yeah, that, that's what you're trying to achieve right now. But my key fundamental is, if the veil is real, which you're arguing, so shall we base, shall we benchmark the argument if the veil is real? Is a quick question to you, yes or no? I mean, that, 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 that has been, that is the crux of this particular question. Yes, it is. So yeah. let's, let's Let me... start with that um, baseline. Wait, wait, one second, because no, I no, just... No, because I've still got to go. Um, if we start with the veil being a physical thing, yeah. your question was, why doesn't Allah destroy the veil itself and all of creation? Because either Allah's blind, as per your argument, or he can't see the veil, which well, obviously would be if he's blind, or for some reason the veil is blocking his sight. Now, my answer to that, and I hope you can appreciate, is that Allah did not desire to crush or to destroy the veil and therefore destroy all of creation. It's not that if the veil was if the veil was real, like you're arguing, or like the argument is, is being based off, then that doesn't take away from the fact that Allah is divinely powerful. It just means that Allah simply does not want to destroy the veil. Just like in the same capacity, he does not want to enact a tsunami that takes over the whole world, right? I think they're the same thing. The desire to destroy the world through his sight of everything he can see, or the desire to cause a tsunami. Right, I, I mean, the, 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 argu the argument has been repeated. Like, I don't need to go back you over... Can bring that back up. The, we, don't need, uh, we don't need to go over the... the, 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 the the crux of the arguments again and again and again. Okay, so, so, like, I am I am ninety nine percent certain, and I'm only needing that to, to demonstrate the proof because you asked me to. Yeah, you made a claim. Yeah, so it's fair. well, absolutely, and you have also made a claim. What claim? You, you, this idea that the veil is not an actual thing. Hypothetical thing. Right, but that's the point. Your hyper, and this is you, you. You can follow the logic of this. I know you can, and you already have demonstrated that you can. So I don't know why you want to obfuscate suddenly. The the, the 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 reality is that your argument is based on a hypothetical, and if your hypothetical is not Islamic Dean, it's not Hanafi school, right? Then your argument collapses. So there is there is well no, there is some onus on you to demonstrate what is the Hanafi position. I am now asking you to demonstrate what is the Hanafi position about the veil. I'd like you to demonstrate that moment, from a, 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 a source that you cite. You're asking for right? One second, I haven't finished. Okay. Right? The, the, the reality is that, that, that that's one argument that we've looked at. And I applaud you for being willing to engage in it in a way that others around here have not. Was it a good argument? Yeah? It's a very creative argument. Was it good? Well, let's put it this way. If it turns out to be the Islamic position that the veil is not a real thing, it is just a kind of religious language for a choice that God is making, then what it would do is it would get out of a contradiction. So it's a good argument. Yes. Thanks. But you've now got to demonstrate, yeah, I'm happy to admit and that. And right, but but one, one second, one second. But, 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 but what I would need you to demonstrate is that's the Hanafi position. Absolutely. Right, so now you must do that. Okay. That is now on you to do that Honestly. because you have made a claim. Okay. Right. But, but, I actually think when you investigate it that you're going to find the evidence goes the other way. That's your hypothesis. Yes. 
It is. I, I, and, and, and I'm allowed the hypothesis. Absolutely. Right. And I bet I, I am willing to buy you a cup of tea and a sandwich of your choice. Like right? It's up to you whether you take it. But like it. but but I'll buy you a cup of tea and a sandwich of your choice if it turns out the Hanafi school goes the other direction. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Now if it stands that the veil is a real thing, yes. as the only evidence on the table so far is Islam Web, the fatwa well, that I showed you, yes, yeah. and I showed you the reference, yeah. said the veil is a real thing, then that means your could be argument flips in the other direction yes. and your defense fails because your defense is, is couched on the idea that it is not an actual thing, it is not a real thing, it's just religious metaphorical language for a decision. And that's the argument you've sustained throughout. Now, that in itself doesn't stop the, the, the it, whilst it gets out of a certain kind of contradiction, it does demonstrate that Allah can limit his attributes by a choice. And if Allah, and if Allah can limit his, his attributes by a choice, then we Christians can say the same, that the Trinity limits in the person of the Son, in his human nature, the, 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 the attributes of that divine person in that human nature by a choice. Because if the defense works for Muslims, the defense works for Christianity. Do you agree? It's reflexive. I agree. Thank you. Because one way X implies uh, Y, X implies Y, Y implies X. Thank you very much. I'm not going to deny that. This is why I like arguing with mathematicians. Yes, I am a mathematician. And I will bring forth a ma ma mathematical point. The idea of the veil being metaphysical was something called a proof by contradiction. You know this? You know this? Time? No. Okay. So a proof by contradiction is you say, say there's a tree. We say, you're, you're arguing that's a tree. And I'll say, well, there's a trait of a tree, physical or not metaphysical. We have to focus on the trait, and then we'll argue the contradictory. Say, let's, we know trees are flammable. If I prove the tree's not flammable, I could argue that's actually not a tree. That is perfectly valid mathematical statement. And the use of my proof by contradiction was, if you're arguing that the veil is, metaf uh, if the veil is physical, created, then if we take the contradictory approach, if the veil is metaphysical, then does the argument destabilize? How does that play out? With that, respect, bro, yes. you're arguing a proof to an, a logic that we both agree upon. There's no reason to prove the logic. We're both using the same logic. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. We're allowed uh, to prove things that already exist. I know, but I'm just saying we're kind of wasting a bit of time here because we're both using time, we're both using the same logical principles yes. and you're now trying to prove to me the logical principle that we're both using. I just want to state the logical principle. Right, just that's so fine. Because you didn't know proof by contradiction. That, I didn't know the term. Yeah, but, but, no, the, but, 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 but the point is, but, as I've demonstrated, is if X equals Y, Y equals X. And so if it works in Islam, it works in Christianity. If Allah can limit his attributes, as your argument would follow, okay. that if he limits his attributes by a choice, then that means that the God of Christianity can limit his attributes by a choice. One moment. So, yeah. I've just talked about the proof of the proof by contradiction. That was it. Now you've asked to bring an onus, uh, you've got, talked about the onus of bringing the fatwa from a Hanafi, Sunni perspective of whether the veil was real or not. No, that the veil is not real, which is what your argument is sustained by. Well, because we know it's a proof by contradiction, that is what it's sustained by, right? Right, so you've got to bring the proof. Yes. So bring the fatwa. So, bring the fatwa from a Hanafi school that says the veil is not an actual phone? object. That's, it's that's not a answer. real thing. But it's got to be a Hanafi source. Because that's, what's I, that's yeah. what I would believe. Right, well, you've got to demonstrate well, well, you're it now. You're going to lose your mind if I say something. Well, well, let, me re let, let, let me reply to him. Do yes. I have to bring it down? Because I really like this conversation. I happily have it. I happily. Park it? Because I, I, if you want, we can park the, that, that point of the discussion. I think it was a good discussion. It really was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your uh, name again? Uh, my name is Mohammed. Mohammed, that was a really lovely conversation. It was good to talk to you. There were a few missteps along the way. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, and vice and versa. And hopefully I didn't, I didn't want to insult you as well. You didn't insult uh, me. Well, not when we were talking anyway. Right, I want, I'd like to give you a gift because I always enjoy when, whenever I have a... Uh, have you got... Uh, I, I will give you a gift as well. I will give you a gift. Have you got a Bible, bro? Um, I don't. I, I do read the Bible via... Um, there you go. 
Now you've got an analog copy. Is this your Bible or? No, no, it's not my. I'm giving them away. It's a Bible. It oh, is Bible. a Bible. That is now your Bible. Which Bible? Oh, King James. King James translation. Does this have now, the you, story you, of the adulterous woman in it? Yes, it will have. In John. In I, John know, I, I don't know about it. I hear people. The, adul the adultery yes. pericope is in there. I've got defects. Yeah. Right. Hasn't been right. I've got great defects. I mean, if you want to talk about that, we can do. This is not someone's. No, that's yours. It was mine. I'm giving it to you. Yeah, let me get you a gift as well. Just so you don't feel left out. I, I think the argument ended well. Um, to summarise. Yeah, go on, I'm listening. Um, whether or not it's meant to be. Just a gospel for you, bro. No worries. If you do on the Bible instead. No, that's yours. Why? Oh, okay. I just gave you a gift. If you just giving it away right in front of me. That's a nice I'll give him a Bible. Right, go on. I will read it in the book. Go on, sorry. Go on, you finish. No, no, that All right. Mohammed, come back to me. Let's talk see, some more. I'm a, I'm a busy guy, like I said, yeah. I'm a mathematician. But yeah. you're asking for a <laughs> fatwa from a Hanafi school uh, from that, a Hanafi that says the veil is yeah. not an actual thing. Okay. It's not a real thing. But if I do prove that it is metaphysical... Then we have another argument. There's another argument. If I prove that it's physical, there is still the argument that God's actions and desires... I want, I want to be clear about our language, because you're a mathematician, Yes. but I've, I've done a bit of theology. Sure. Yeah, You've got yeah, to be valid, clear. Valid. Metaphysical is not equal to uh, material. No, I, I know that. That's why. Right. I okay. So what I'm saying is, let's say real. Yeah. Your ar your argument, if it works, is based on the idea that it's unreal and that the, 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 the it's just a linguistic phrase to talk about a veil referencing a decision. Yeah. And that's so, because it's a proof by contradiction. So you've got to that's you've got to demonstrate that it is just a, a non-real thing that's link, religious language talking about a decision. Yeah, I mean, All right. in, in a proof by contradiction, you have to bring that claim. Yeah. So it's, it's valid I, for me. I'm not so sure it, it rests on that, but that's what I want no, to no, say. But I was just going to say, if... You I have the last the word and then Mustafa wants no, no, to say no, something. No, I just want to say, whether or not I bring the claim... So if the veil is created, yeah. real, there is still potential for me to make another argument similar to that, would you say? We can explore that at a later date. If it's real, then obviously you can marshal some of the defence. Okay. I think, I th I, again, I have a hypothesis. But I think you're going to be surprised. I think the Hanafi school is going to come out on my side, not yours. I think I have a 99% hypothesis. Sorry. That if the Hanafi perspective is that the veil is real. Which I think it is. Created, fine. I think the argument that I made of Allah's capabilities and his desires to do things still holds. And we'll make the argument when I bring that claim. But Brilliant. When I can. And when I won't you, promise that's fine. Because I won't hold you to it. Yeah. But when when you do, you'll 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 demonstrate that Christianity has no contradiction by saying that the in the incarnation we'll there's limitations. Those we'll have to explore. Right, we're talking about on, contradictions here. Yeah? yeah. And you're making an example that if I was to reject your claims of hypocrisy, I would have to make the same hypocrisy contradictions within Islam. Yeah. Right. So how does that benefit Christianity? Because if all you're saying is you're basically confirming what the Quran says and you're saying this also applies to Christianity. You're basically saying my ideology, not just uh, Islam is not wrong. You're basically saying Islam is right because the, the contradictions that I say where God can't be limited, but you're saying he can. And you're giving me examples where God is limited in the Quran. You're basically saying, oh, the, the Quran has some validity and some credibility. Right. So how does that, how does the Quran being subject to the same level of critique benefit you because you haven't addressed the issue of oh we're wrong so they're wrong too that means i'm right that doesn't that's not necessarily Can I, right, right, right let me you explain my question? yes i do right so the thing that's being critiqued in my counter argument is the islamic the, the assumptions behind the the dawagandist question the dai question right what i'm actually saying is right islamic theology about the quran and about the veil works for Christianity no 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 listen it works for Islam mm. right it's a consistent argument right but that 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 theology Mustafa Muslims borrowed from Christians because Christians were making it centuries before Islam from the Council of Ephesus right so what's actually being critiqued isn't Islam right what's being critiqued is these kind of childish silly arguments that muslims make where they attack christianity saying well how can god be limited how can god do this and and, and be that it's that kind of mentality and argument that's being critiqued yes, yes, i'm actually not criticizing islam because strictly speaking the theology that is in the books of your scholars makes sense because and why do i agree with it 
because our scholars make exactly the same arguments. And it works for Islam, which means X equals Y, like your mathematician friend said. So if it works for Islam, right? If it works, it is a different guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's just been promoted to mathematician, by the way, right? If it works for Islam, then it works for Christianity, which means that it's the question itself that is silly. It's the argument itself that is silly. Right, and, and that's that's what's right. going on there. So in terms of the contradiction in itself, you can't really use that as a as a as a means to sort of make a point against you can't make that as a point against Islam then because you're basically saying your question I understand what you're saying now. You're saying your question doesn't make sense because if you were to agree with me, it's got the same holes in your ideology, yeah? That's what you're basically saying. Yeah. Um, I'm then, saying if it sinks if it sinks, what I'm saying is this. If your argument, that's, that's if Islam is Mustafa, saying that God has limitations. Mustafa, to be Mustafa, listen. Exactly. I'm I'm saying to you, if if your argument sinks Christianity, it sinks Islam. If your defence that would protect Islam from your own argument works for Islam, then that same defence works for Christianity. It's X equals Y, Y equals X thinking, and that. So it's what's being criticised. To be clear, Mustafa, mm -hmm. isn't. Islam, what's been criticised is the silly kind of argument that gave rise to the question in the first place that does it, that strawmans Christianity on one side and then ignores orthodox Islam on the other side. Because a, an, intelligent, an intelligent person would be consistent in the way that they apply principles across the board. And, and so your, your mathematically that makes applies, sense. Your argument only applies if indeed the, the, the references that you're quoting for uh, the veil of Islam uh, of Allah Al and the rest of it. Yeah. So, so if it is actually proving that there's limitations, yes. then yes, I can see the, the, the correlation. There. Correct. But if your point in the veil of, of Allah doesn't actually prove limitation, yeah. then it's not it's not the same it's, it's not one for all. It's not like this point is the same as that point. Does that right. Yeah, no that's so, that's a fair that's a fair question. That's a fair point. So so when we sort of like uh, really go into it, it's not if, if if you take it from my perspective, if it's not a contradiction that like that's a limitation of God, your argument of oh you've applied the same logic, it, it destroys your argument too. It wouldn't. Yeah. Because if it is if it isn't a limitation, then we're back to square one of me uh, questioning you and saying you have limitations, we don't. Right. So let me let me let me let me answer this. It, it depends what kind of conversation you want to have, whether you want to have an honest conversation or just a polemical conversation. Because if you're going to have an honest conversation, you have to actually deal with what Christians believe. Mm -hmm. Christians don't believe that the divinity is limited. Now, you've just heard that in black and white, mm -hmm. clearly, right? You can now never go away, unless you suffer some blow to the head, mm -hmm and say that Christians believe that the divinity has limitations because I literally just tell you the opposite. Mm -hmm. What we believe is that human beings have limitations and that the divine Logos took to himself a humanity and in that humanity experiences <coughs> limitations, <coughs> right? <coughs> that is what we as Christians believe. And I think, Bob, that is where the disagreement comes in because... Exactly. That, that's where Dawagandis get it wrong all the time. You, right. you can say we get it wrong, I can say you got it wrong. How I mean, can I... Well, just one second. Uh, Mustafa, no offence. But out of the two of us, which one studied Christianity <laughs> academically? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Right? So in terms of ranking of learning, I have a degree or that included a substantial study of Christianity. What do you, in the game of trumps, what do you want to put up against my degree? In other words, when I tell you that Christians don't believe that the divinity has limitations, it's not, it's not open for you to go, well, maybe Christians don't believe that. No, that's what Christians believe. Like if you I'm turn, wait, 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 I'm landing, I'm landing and then you can reply. It's like me, if, if a Christian came up to you and said, why do you Muslims worship Muhammad? It's, it's a black and white reply, Muslims don't worship Muhammad. And no amount of me saying Muslims worship Muhammad will make Muslims worship Muhammad. Likewise, doesn't matter how many times Muslims say we Christians worship three gods, we don't. Doesn't matter how many times you say we think God became a man, we don't. 
We do, what we say is Christ took to himself a humanity. It's different from saying God changed into a humanity. The key word in that sentence is the word change. And if you don't want me to make false accusations about Islam, mm -hmm. don't make false accusations about Christianity. Is that fair? Yeah. So in terms of proof or text, you're, you're bringing up your degree in um, some sort of Christian education. Yeah, religious and studies. Saying, and, you're, and you're basically saying to me, what do you have to trump that? Yeah. I don't need anything to trump that. I'm simply asking a question about contradiction. I'm trying to understand logic of why you believe this. And I'm trying to explain as to why I believe what I believe. Yeah. There's people who've got uh, more qualifications in Islam, Judaism, and everything. Does, yeah. it, does it automatically trump your opinion or your views as being valid, wrong, or, or, or anything? Agreed. So, it is. It, so I don't yeah. understand what your whole point was when you said, oh, I don't know if you're trying to belittle me when you're trying to say, oh, what do you have that, that equates to a religious No, Mr. definitely not. Let me, let me explain. <laughs> no, no, let me explain, right? It's because when, when I raised a certain point, you seemed, at least to my hearing, to suggest the idea that it was up for debate about what Christians believe about the Incarnation. Christians have been clear about the Incarnation since Chalcedon, right? Like, and that's centuries before Islam. And so there's no, there's no area uh, of this conversation that has not already been covered where Christians have not expressed clearly what they believe about the Incarnation. And from Ephesus, which precedes Chalcedon, because Chalcedon is an interpretation of Ephesus, it's a clarification of Ephesus, but from Ephesus, the, 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 the writings of the Fathers and the writings of the Councils is that, is that we don't say the divinity changed into a humanity, we don't say that the divinity died, we don't say that the divinity suffered, we don't say that the divinity became hungry, we don't say that the divinity, we say that the human person, Jesus Christ, who was filled by that divine person, experiences hunger, is born, suffers pain, because he is a human. And that's not something that the divine changes into, it is something that the divine creates over there and dwells inside of. Yeah? And an analogous to that, an analogy to that, it's very similar to what Muslims believe about the Quran. You believe that that Quran that's in Arabic is actually the eternal word of Allah, right? But here it is in your hand, you're touching it, you, you, you're, you're reciting it, you're seeing it with your eyes. Because in Islamic theology, they believe that the paper and the ink and the eternal word of Allah are like that. But they're never confused, they're never mingled, they're never one changing into the other. What does that sound like? That sounds like Christian theology because that's where the Muslims got it from. What's the evidence that the Christians were copied by the Muslims? I don't understand. I don't see how those two points can sort of uh, correlate because they're two completely separate things. We keep going around in circles, Bob. We keep mentioning the Quran as if it's the same as a, as a human being. Um, there's no correlation between the two because God can reveal a message. Doesn't necessarily mean um, he had to enter into a, a physical being. And then you're trying to differentiate between God is always uh, unlimited. But here, here you have uh, a human being who, who is who is limited? Okay. Yeah. So this is the only thing that I'm really struggling to accept. Um, and again, you, you got a GCSE? Did you say in, in religious education? Degree. Degree, right? Yeah. So. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. it, it's fair, 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 fair jokes. Go on. So fair college. <laughs> this is the only thing that I. It, it's very hard for me to accept. This is one of the reasons that I, I always struggle to accept Christianity. Yeah. It's because. You guys don't want to admit that the, the limitation, and you can say that we've been believing this for X amount of thousands of years and all the scholars and all these believe this, you, you believe this, you can say what you want, but it, it just doesn't resonate with me that um, a human being can, can be God and, and have limitations and like you said, have hunger, be the, uh, not, don't be self-sufficient and it, it's hard for me to admit that. Can I reply? Uh, yeah, we're, without going into, I don't want to sort of, that's I think we should wrap it up. We, we should. We yeah. should. So um, I'll let you finish and then I'll reply and then... Yeah, so I mean that's the only thing that I would struggle with, God, um, is sort of accepting that Jesus is 
is either sent by God or is God or is the son of God. I don't know what your position on that is. Yeah. Maybe we could do this another time. Yeah, I'll be happy I'll to talk to you another time. Veil, I'll, I'll look into that veil thing and yeah. maybe come up with my own conclusion because I don't know. Okay. You keep bringing it up as if it's some sort of like trump card, but I think if we truly understand it, I don't think it's a big contradiction or a problem as, as you're making it out to be. Can I reply? <laughs> so so, so the, the crux of this debate, the crux of this debate is can God limit himself? Mm -hmm. Now we're saying God limits himself in the sense that he takes to himself a human nature, possesses it and lives through it. And in that human nature, there is limitation. And I'm pointing out that in Islam, in both in terms of your understanding of the Quran and in the terms of your understanding of the veil, you also believe that God can create something that limits his attributes. That's and, that and, and, and we need to, is correct according to you. Yeah, and we need to be very, very clear about what's actually being limited. Mm -hmm. It is in, 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 specifically to your question about knowledge. What's being limited is the attribute of access, not the attribute of knowledge, right? And that's why I tried to make that distinction earlier about the distinction between the possession of knowledge and access to knowledge because you can possess knowledge that you don't have access to so what exactly is being limited from the Christian perspective what is actually being limited is not the possession of knowledge the divine knowledge is not destroyed it doesn't disappear it doesn't vanish it doesn't go somewhere else it's there with Jesus but he doesn't have access to it because it is the attribute of access that is being limited at the incarnation, right? Like Allah limits the destructive power of his glory. What's being limited? His glory? No. But the destructive power of Allah's glory is being limited by the veil. And if the veil is created, yeah. And then if, if the veil is created, then Allah can limit his attributes by creation which means Muslims believe what Christians believe. We just apply it to different things. I appreciate your answer, by the way. Okay. Um, so going back to the veil and the limitations, if I can demonstrate to you that that, limit, that isn't in fact a limitation, yep. you wouldn't really have an argument and say that that compares now to Jesus's limitation or lack of knowledge or access to knowledge. Yeah, you would so, have to demonstrate that. Yeah, so I would have to come back and say to you, look, the veil is this. It's not a physical veil, or even if it is a physical veil, the limitations are this and this. Yeah. So if, uh, I, can, if I can come and prove that to you maybe next week, because I don't know anything about this, this veil argument. Yeah. And uh, you seem to know more about it than me. So, so I, I, w I would yeah. like to have more knowledge on that. Okay. And then come back another time and, and, and have a bit of That's discussion. absolutely fine. I'd love to do that, Mustafa. And, and, and I appreciate that we've ended better than maybe we got in the middle. We started well. We get kind of wobbled in the middle, but we've ended well, and that's great. Yeah, and you saw you. I like, I like you, Mr. And from the videos I've seen of you, I'm not gonna lie, you came across as a bit of a like, not, yeah, not, not the greatest guy. But like talking to you, you can we stick that on record? He said I was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you come across as a bit of a cool disingenuine. Did you come across as a bit as disingenuine? Well, I hope now you know that's not true. You are, you are sometimes. You are. From what I've learned that. about you, you seem, you seem you're, you're not just, as bad as I seem. Yeah, you're, you're even, even Lamin's just admitted that it's only sometimes. Yeah. So, so my point is it's not yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. No, not all right. the time. And yeah, that yeah. means I'm human, like everybody else. So, so, so my point to you is this, right? If you can come back to me and demonstrate mm -hmm. that the veil, and I, 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 I want to make sure that when you come back, we don't get off to a false start. So mm -hmm. I want to be clear mm -hmm. about something. I'm not saying that the veil is physical. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the veil is real. Because there are things that are real that are not physical, like truth. So you're and saying it's not a physical thing? I, 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 I make no comment. I'm agnostic as to whether it's physical or not. I'm just saying it, it's real. So like numbers are real, truth is real, morality is real. But these are not physical things, but they're still real things. They're still true things. And so what I'm saying is the veil is a real thing. But how would I, again, based on... Now, Mustafa, do you really want me to help you make no, 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 your no, defence? No, because what you're saying to me is, 
here's the, here's the standard that I would accept. And you're basically not giving me a standard. How am I going to prove to you something that's not real physically? Yeah. Is then I'm able to present it as something that is uh, limited. Right, I'll help you. Right, you, you've got to demonstrate, right? I, w I would like to have a clean slate of an answer that I can give. Sure. Without you saying to me, by the way, my position is this and you have to go around it. Maybe your position is wrong from the very get-go and I can present something completely different. Right, so I'll give you, I'll give you a hand. You know Mohammed that was here? He gave a really good defence, right? But it was contingent upon the veil not being a real thing. His argument was dependent upon the, the, the talk about the veil simply being lexical mm -hmm. to uh, a, a, like a, a word metaphor for yeah, a yeah, decision yeah. that Allah makes. Yes, yes. Now, that argument actually gets round my contradiction, mm -hmm. right? Now, please not. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it gets round. So I'm not, I'm, brother, focus on me, right? So, so I'm not being unreasonable. I've, I've just admitted that if he demonstrates that the veil is not a real thing, then he has escaped my argument, right? So I'm not saying that I've come up with some unanswerable question, but now the onus is on you and me to go away and do our research. I'm pretty sure I'm right. The, the, the Muslim position is that the veil is a real thing. And the, and the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that is because I've spoke to Hashim, I've spoke to Muhammad Hijab, they have all stated that the veil is a real thing, in person, to my face, off camera, right? So, so that's why I'm confident. And I also showed a fatwa from a Muslim website saying that the veil was a real thing. And I've read other things in Islam that I couldn't find right now that talk about the veil being a real thing. But if, but so in other words, if you can demonstrate to me that it is Islamic deen, that the veil is not real, then you have escaped my argument. So there you go. All right, you look after yourself, Mustafa. You Take care. Well, God bless. This guy really wants to talk to you. I know he does. But he, he until he pays me the thousand pound he owes me. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? I know. No, no, it's right, it's right. So until, until he pays me the money that he owes me, I won't debate him. And that's been my position for years. Because, because he said, he said that if I, if I end, he, he, and we've got it on camera, you can see it on top of it. If I debate him on a question, he would give me 500 pounds. I debated him on a question, he never gave me 500 pounds. Now you ask me, should a Muslim keep it for Right, wait, I'll get it. Right.